Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do a whole new entry here, a whole new series. Once again, based on your new suggestions. Please keep them coming because I'll be doing these videos throughout this week, and then maybe going into next week as well, and then maybe even further, just depending on circumstances. But in this case, this has to do with a fascinating incident that occurred there in Washington, D.C. And there's a little bit of personal history tied to me because... That at the airport that I'll mention here in a minute, I've actually been to that very same airport. In fact, that's where I la uh, landed essentially a couple of years ago doing a trip there to Washington, D.C. So it goes to show again the places you're at now, who knows what kind of history was there, who knows how far back, and, and once you realize it, it definitely makes an impact later on. But it has to do with this. It's an incident that occurred there again in Washington, D.C., and it's known as the 1952 Washington DC UFO incident. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info associated with this case along with some of the potential cover-up that occurred there. Again, it's all based on beliefs and on which side is telling the story. So here's what happened. It basically occurred over two specific dates. The first date happened on July 19th, 1952 and it went over into July 20th in the early morning. Basically, it went over the entire night itself and here's what occurred. Over at Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, which was back then known as Washington National Airport, there on that nighttime period, a little bit before midnight or so, there were these seven objects that suddenly appeared right on the blips of those radars. So this is the exact airport that I visited back in the early 2000s. I was there on a trip. It was a nice place to visit there in Washington, D.C. And at that time, whenever I was there in the airport, I had no idea that back in 1952, this is what had occurred. So on that fateful night, these seven objects appeared on that radar. There there was no known aircraft within that location, nothing else that really could have established like some kind of objects appearing all of a sudden. And then there was a senior air traffic controller there who watched these and later stated that yes, he knew that immediately that this was a very strange situation. Not just because all of a sudden there were seven of them, but because the way they moved, their movements all together were just completely different from any other known aircraft that was there. And so everyone that was looking at it were looking at each other other they were trying to identify it the way they described it and this was interesting too because there's variations of these blips it was no uh, the people that saw it in other words visually described it as being a bright light hovering in the sky and then moving at a very very fast speed in fact more on that here in a minute as to how fast this thing was going it's almost impossibly fast considering its speed and what's interesting is that over at another location andrews air force base which is about 10 miles away from this airport they too reported some kind of blips at first they didn't see anything on their end either but they would in a little bit but they in turn mentioned that there was nothing coming from them nothing else in terms of any kind of situation like I don't know aircraft that they could state that that's what was causing things from their end nothing along those lines so there was no hint as to what truly this was but when they saw an object they stated that it was more than the lines of an orange ball of fire and in this case, it was having a tail, something that was trailing it um, basically from behind it. And obviously, this too alerted everyone else there as far as to its presence. And it also had an unbelievable speed that was coming forth on it. And so finally, there was an, a, a pilot that was in one of the one ways. He was there waiting exactly in that spot, in that airport, waiting for permission to take off. He in turn mentioned that he saw six objects. And on his case, he described them as being white, tailless, and then fast moving lights. He was probably one of the people that saw it for the longest time period because it was around 14 minutes that he could see these white objects and what was interesting is that the way he saw them and the way he described them apparently he was in radio contact with the air with the tower itself once he saw them and he was telling them exactly what was happening and how it was moving it coincided with the radar report as well so what he was seeing was perfectly in touch with what the people on the radar screens were seeing as well and then over at Andrews Air Force Base again 
they were able to see other things. In this case, one was an orange red light. Uh, so again, another variation of it. And in his circumstances, they would in turn a stop abruptly still. So they would move really, really fast. They would stand completely still and then they would change direction and then change altitude all at incredible speeds. And this was happening again over a particular time period. So by now, there were at least three radar centers that were now uh, tracking this particular set of things, whatever they were, and they were all coinciding around the same time. So three different locations, three sets of people, and all of them stating the same information. And then it was finally around 3 a.m. or so that there was these jet fighters that were commissioned. They were taken out. They were trying to arrive over that location. And coincidentally or purposely, as soon as they did so, that's when these objects disappeared. They vanished essentially from the entire radar. And then when that happened, they were nowhere around and obviously these planes had nothing to see and so when they left those planes left afterward that's when the sudden these things came back so whatever they were and they were identified again as ufos because there was nothing else really to identify them afterward they stayed again for a good time period it must have been a hard work to essentially have other things come out like another under term of jet fighter just like that so then that time period they were still there hovering and when they did so they stayed till about maybe 5 30 a.m and then that was it. They were gone. And that was the uh, time period associated with the July 19th to July 20th encounter with these mysterious objects. So fascinating in this case because it happened over well-publicized locations, not some remote area in the middle of, of let's say, the United States and some random location. No, here it happened over several Air Force bases and a very popular airport and multiple witnesses from multiple uh, towers and all of them seen visually and then also on radar, they all encountered this. Now cut to July 26th and this was around 8.15 p.m. and this would stretch over to the next morning on July 27th. That's when, once again, there in Washington, there were a series of strange lights that were reported. This time, though, it seemed to be happening right during the flight of a uh, airplane, what was known as the National Airlines flight at that time. And then that's when that happened. There was these strange lights that were seen by a pilot and a stewardess. And at that exact moment, the radar centered one more time over there at the National Airport, which is, again, the Ronald Reagan Airport, and then Andrews Air Force Base also immediately tracked those same things. So what the pilots were seeing in their case from their airplane was again coinciding with the radar centers and what they were tracking. And once again, they were all known as unknown objects because there was nothing there to report in terms of other type of airplanes or anything else that was that was associated with it. There would have been no chance anyways because in this case the objects were traveling at first at a very very slow speed but then they just zoomed like they went into high gear. In fact it was estimated that the speed these things were traveling were now 7,000 miles per hour. And that's right you read that correctly. 7,000 miles per hour. Nothing close to anything else. In fact, this time go around, there were these other jet fighters that came immediately, well, not immediately, but at least much quicker than last time. So by 11.30 p.m., two of them came around that location and they were actually trailing these things. Like they were trying to find them and see them and then obviously try to uh, confirm what exactly they were. Well, one of the pilots, the way he was stating it was he saw these four white glows. That's how he described it in his case. And they were trying to chase them, but there was no chance. In fact, when they went below a thousand feet, he was at his maximum speed. I don't know exactly how fast that goes. Someone might have to post it in the comments uh, down below as far as how fast these F-94 Starfire jet fighters go, but he was traveling at his maximum speed, and he stopped because he said, I ceased chasing them because I saw no chance of overtaking them. Clearly, whatever these things were, were traveling at a much, much quicker speed than them, but at least they got to see them from some level, it was interesting because the way I was reading the information, one of them saw them and then another one didn't, even though they were within the same vicinity. I guess it just depended on the angle. You know how sometimes when you're at a certain angle on certain lights, you can see it on a very bright stance, and then in other cases, just a tiny twist, and all of a sudden it goes next to nothing. I imagine that's what was happening here. Right spot at the right time made all the difference when it came to seeing these things. And so when they responded, you know, I see them now and they're all around me, and then that pilot was asking for 
or permission on what to do. Apparently, nobody answered because they didn't know exactly what what was the case. You know, there was nothing here that was there from before in terms of other situations to, to use experience from. So they pretty much just probably told them to just hover around and look around and then try to find out what occurred. This went on for a little bit, a little bit past midnight, and then again towards the next morning. And then that was it. They were gone. Whatever these things were just went off the radar. And then there was no other situation for them. But it still left a lot of people baffled, both at the airport, the pilots themselves, and then also the jet fighters, and then also the Air Force Base, all the radars. They had no idea in terms of what had occurred and what they were going to do about it. They could just pretty much just walk and see what these quote-unquote targets were and then try to guess what occurred from them like what was causing them in other words and that in fact at least to the next point here remember I was mentioning earlier about there being a potential you know different sides stating different things so apparently President Harry Truman himself was alerted about what had occurred in this latest incident the ones from the July 26th to 27th period and he was on a phone call but didn't necessarily ask any questions himself but listened in as to what happened there were other departments that got involved as well and here's essentially what they stated apparently this cause remember over two separate nights over multiple locations over multiple radars and on a visual point was all caused by a temperature inversion that's their statement that's what they stated altogether this temperature inversion apparently causes cool air to mix with dry air and when that happens radar signals apparently go off they go wonkers, and so when that occurs, it gives false returns. That's what they were stating. That's their involvement. That's essentially what happened. And, of course, that didn't take into account any of the other eyewitnesses, people that looked and saw these things. Remember, I was mentioning earlier, white lights, red lights, warm lights, uh, reddish-orange lights as well. Um, and one involving a tail as well, and then things stopping in midair, reversing, going very, very fast. None of that was mentioned within uh, the other stuff as well. And I think there was a little bit of, you call it the slow walk when it comes to finding uh, investigations, when it comes to investigators, in other words, finding more evidence, because apparently there was some, uh, some, some, some gatherings that were done, and then people were trying to find more information, but there was a little bit of you know, we're going to make this as hard as possible to try to find and give reports to it. So that's why more witnesses were not conducted in terms of like a formal investigation uh, when it came to this case, because there was a lot of slow walking in terms of letting permission of people going in and about and trying to find um, the information associated with it. That's at least how I read the supporting stuff too. And then I was reading some other things too, that it could have been other aerial phenomenon that was misinterpreted, such as meteors, if you could believe that, and then other stars as well. And then also that there may have been just unknown radar contacts, people that were apparently riding about in the air, regular people, in other words, in regular planes, they just didn't happen to identify themselves. And that could have been another thing there too. So obviously, you know, take that all of that with a grain of salt because of the situation that I was just mentioning over this past video. But that's essentially what the investigators and everyone else, people that from the White House, people from the CIA and then other departments all came together, Air Force as well, all came together and then other type of departments. I think there was a group called the Office of Scientific Intelligence, Office of Current Intelligence, all of those got together. And that's essentially what they stated over these two nights, what occurred. So take again all that. This is just the official stance associated with it. But obviously there's a lot more in terms of visual and other type of eyewitness accounts and everything else that I mentioned earlier um, uh, that, that, that says otherwise. But other than that, that was pretty much it. That's pretty much what occurred. In fact, this even made Project Blue Book as well in terms of some of the pages within it. But yes, um, as far as those two instances there in Washington, D.C., that's pretty much everything that occurred there. And again, if you ever fly into the Ronald Reagan National Airport, then you'll be able to see this thing. Like, in other words, when you're there, remember back uh, sometime in 1952, as you're there at the airport, probably near the tower itself, on that fateful night, that's when everyone there saw these particular UFOs, whatever they were, these white lights that were blazing about that nighttime sky, you too could have been there uh, back in 1952 seeing it. But when you're there now, just try to visualize it. And that's what occurred at that exact spot. But if anybody has any more information, anything else might have missed, then please post those comments below. How about that? Anybody from that time period? 
who knows, we may still have some people there that were around that time period. If you know about it more, more information associated with it, then please post those comments below as well. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.